Hello, my name is Ian McFerrin. The reason for the timing of this video is that a man by the name of Lee Garrett was standing as an independent candidate in the general election um, 2019. So I didn't want to put this video up uh, before that, uh, just in case it was viewed as an attempt to interfere with the democratic process, um, and also obviously in case it adversely hampered his chances. So where Lee Garrett is shown in any media sources in this video, um, it should not be taken as a sign of what I'm saying here to be linked uh, directly or any other way with him. Um, even though I am using one of his videos, um, this is nothing to do with him. This video is exclusively about Mark Steele. Having said that, I will be addressing parts of this video to the Sun Party as well, um, but it's only in respect of Mark Steele. So again, um, just to be clear, I held back from publishing this video before the general election um, in case it interfered with the democratic process in respect of that political party's campaign. We are now past um, the general election, so if you like, I can now get on with it. So just to be clear, <laughs> I personally, like so many people in a, a quite an exponentially growing number, am against the rollout of 5G, as it is at the moment anyway, simply because it is untested for safety levels and therefore, as there is not a single person in the world who can state that it's safe, which is why no one does, it has to be assumed that there might be a risk especially given what we know today about its history with military activity. So whilst I fully support Mark Steele's stance against the rollout of 5G, and indeed you know, many other people, it's not just him of course, I have a lot of questions that I feel need air in now, particularly since we're past the election, as I said. <clears throat> uh, I just... I suppose I better make it clear that this video has not come about overnight. Um, it's, been, it's been a long time coming and has been subject to rewrite after rewriting, consideration after consideration. Um, this is why I feel that I need to make it clear that I am fully behind anyone who stands against 5G at this time. <sighs> To push something like 5G onto the public, knowing only about its military applications in respect to causing health issues, is, as far as I'm concerned, insane. Uh, now that said, there is a growing concern surrounding Mark Steele, which I hope this video will be instrumental in laying to rest by prompting a proper response to the points that I'm going to be raising here. So again, just to be clear, this is not a personal attack on Mark Steele. I've never met the man. Um, truth be told, I'm not sure I have enough evidence, despite what other people may say, to even suggest that there is anything untoward going on with Mark Steele. Personally, I actually think Mark Steele may be a genuine uh, person in all of this, but his approach is, well, let's be honest, it's quite simply awful and badly thought out, if thought out at all at times. So my aim in this video is that not only will Mark Steele see the sense in responding to the points raised here, as well as providing his credentials, but also will begin fact-checking more thoroughly in future. The public conduct of Mark Steele, both in typed communication online and in some of the videos he has been seen in of late, um, whether they be his own or other people's, makes him appear to have a sort of intimidatory presence and a person who is not capable or prepared to listen to the views of others nor answer questions directly related to his own statements. Now, this by anyone's standards is suspicious behaviour. 
For people researching 5G, Mark Steele's name will inevitably pop up in a search engine. Um, and as a result, along with the plethora of people complaining about his attitude and inability or unwillingness to prove his claims of being an expert in weapons. Um, this makes the anti-5G movement look bad. Indeed, it is a fact that some of the information Mark Steele has presented is simply wrong. This means that the wrong information is either being presented in the best scenario in an accidental or accidentally mistaken way, or in the worst scenario, intentionally misleading. Now, let me be perfectly clear here. I honestly don't know which of those scenarios is true, but it has to be one or the other. And Mark Steele's unverified, self-proclaimed expertise in weaponry does not help matters here. Now, as I've said, it's obvious that Mark Steele has a very prominent presence online in respect of 5G. Hence, he is often asked to present at seminars and be interviewed in documentaries, not least because of his claims about being a weapons expert. In this presentation that I'm going to show you here, um, uh, which was given to the Democrats and Veterans Party Conference in 2018, uh, Mark still touches on his background but offers no details about the companies he has worked for, the dates, locations or even where the public can find evidence to support his claim. It's just that, a claim. I'm Mark Steele. Anybody who hasn't heard me, I'm a weapons systems head-up display expert. I'm one of the leading experts in the world. I've actually broke cover in relation to this, and the reason I became an expert was because I invented them. State of the art. All right? You'll hear a lot of tales. There's a lot of people doing what me saying what I'm going to tell you tonight. And a lot of people try and discredit me, SDS, Special Defence Squad. Additionally, Mark Steele has advised people to carry out acts that are illegal. Those being, believe it or not, sticking up leaflets on public property, which is seen in the eyes of the law as, amongst other things, trespass, breach of the Town and Country Planning Act, advertisements specifically, and even the charge of criminal damage, to name but a few, all these can be used against you for the simple act of putting up a sticker on public property. Um, well, on this point, Mark still really does have a responsibility as a public figure not to mislead people. Uh, I'm aware of one woman who openly stated on Facebook for all the world to see that she did just this, putting up stickers, when her child was at school, so as not to shame the child. Um, but the child will know, according to the mother, who it was who did it. Um, so presumably she's very passionate about these sort of things, and that's fine. The thing is, the mother has admitted online for everyone to see that she has committed a crime. In fact, a few crimes. That is what's known, you might say, as an open and shut case, and any defendant hasn't got any option but to plead guilty and throw themselves on the mercy of the court. Claiming something like, but Mark Steele is telling people to do it, is not a defence, at least not an effective one anyway. And incidentally, I've not actually seen Mark Steele do any of that uh, sticking stickers up. Um, now, I'm not saying he hasn't, maybe he has, but uh, it seems as though he's been quite sensible and not advertised the fact. So, given that to do that, whether we like it or not, these things are classed as crimes and can be prosecuted, I would remind Mark Steele that he has a duty to the public to bring to their attention the consequences of their actions should they do that. Um, now, I'm going to show you one little video or clip of a video here. Um, now, again, as I said earlier, this is uh, 
actually put up by a gentleman called Lee Garrett, um, who's obviously not responsible for anything that Mark Steele says or does. We're all responsible for our own actions, and Mark Steele is responsible for his actions. Um, so this is not in any way, shape or form to suggest that Lee Garrett um, has any part to play here or is responsible in any way. He has an interesting document. Um, it's a sticker. It's a sticker that we've seen on a number of lampposts around the, around the area. And what it actually says is, it's a public notice. That public notice actually states quite clearly, right? No removal. Anybody that's seen should take a videotape of them. Anybody removes any of these from lampposts, because obviously 5G is an indictable crime. It's an offence. It's a crime against humanity. Anybody seen removing them, make sure, right, you record it. The reason you need to record it, right, is because they are criminals, all right? We are coming. Justice is coming because we hate the people who break the law and especially people who pretend, who pretend to be upholding the law when in point of fact they're doing the exact opposite. It's 180 degrees to reality. So... Personally, I would suggest people looking at that and similar things that Mark Steele has suggested along those lines, um, his advice to put this information out there in that particular way, stick it, hand them out, absolutely, but to stick them up. Now, until I think he's proven his credentials and answered a few of the points that I'm raising here and that other people have raised them in this face, I'm certainly not the first one to do that. It would be advisable for the public to do as his brother, Graham Steele, who's founder and leader of the Sun Party, appears to be doing, and that is not taking his advice. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Mark Steele, as I think most people know who've looked into 5G, um, advocates wearing sunglasses coated with a substance called iridium, which, whilst a little brittle, um, it apparently protects the eyes when it's over the lens from the harmful effects of blue-white LED lights. And when you look into that, um, there are not many glasses around that have that iridium on them, but it's certainly the case, so that is a true statement. Mark Steele's twin brother, Graham, whose political party stands as a one-point policy party, that being to stop the rollout of 5G until, 5G until it, such time anyway as it can be shown to have been tested and proven to be safe, which is very, very sensible. I'm absolutely completely behind that. He, as leader of a political party, and with Mark Steele as his um, advisor on this, he doesn't take Mark Steele's advice. He doesn't wear these glasses. Now, that should say something. Um, as a chief technical advisor in the Sun Party and also in Graham Steele's private business, incidentally. You have to ask yourself why a political candidate, leader of a party and potential leader of this country is not listening to the people who advise him. So I just find that odd. Um, and it brings into question why Graham still keeps Mark still on board if he isn't going to take his own twin brother's advice, basically, particularly since it's technical advice. Anyway, in the same video, Mark still presents what he calls an American military document. True, that's exactly what it is. He shows the front page, as you can see on the screen now, and then turns it over to show this image. The trouble is, though, this is not what is on the other side of that document. I did a search online and found the document with that front cover without any issue at all. It took about 15 seconds. It's a PDF document and is linked below in this YouTube video. So you can take a look at that yourself to verify what I'm saying, although I'm going to try and make it easy for you by explaining it here and putting up some screenshots as well. So... I thought I would examine this document to see if what Mark Steele was talking about was the case. Um, because the way it's presented here by Mark Steele, one could certainly be forgiven for thinking that Mark Steele had just found the smoking gun. 
However, the fact is the document is not declassified document, meaning that it was once declassified. It's just a standard training manual for any American personnel who has ever, and sorry, it's, and it's never actually um, been secret, withheld. It, it, it's just online. It's, there's nothing special about this. So I kind of don't really understand Mark Steele's comment when he says he has a copy of it, because that kind of implies that, you know, he's got some sort of contact and, you know, trust me on this one, I've got a copy. Well, anyone can get a copy completely free. So I don't follow the relevance of that statement unless it is to intentionally mislead, because... I'm linking the document beneath me or beneath this video. I'm not trying to suggest that I've got some sort of special connections, powers or whatever. I'm saying, hey, if you want to take a look at it, click the link. It isn't difficult. Now, when one examines the original genuine document, the page you see on the screen now is not in that document anywhere. It's apparent from the screenshot that the image on the back of the front cover shown here by Mark Steele was poorly photocopied onto it. You can see the pho photocopying uh, mark or sort of uh, smear, whatever, uh, at the top of the page. So I really have to ask why that was done. On the alleged inside of the cover, which you're looking at here, we see the logo for Naval Air Welfare Center, or NAWC, <laughs> N-A-W-C. This further proves that the front and back of that single sheet of paper Mark Steele was relying on is a fusion of two separate documents. Why do that? doesn't make any sense and this is not the first time Mark Steele has relied upon false information to, to support his views here we see him using a perfectly innocent website's image which has been manipulated by someone else to make it look like it is 5g again this is bad fact-checking it's almost sensationalist and here we see both Mark Steele and his twin brother, Graham Steele, sharing the same photo on their respective Facebook pages, both claiming to be each other in that photo at different places and at different times. And again, I have to ask, why lie about something like that? That is so minor, so inconsequential in and of itself why do that I, I can appreciate if I had taken a photo of one of them and them being twin brothers I could make the mistake because you know they're twin brothers but they know who they are as individuals they know whether they were at that particular place at that particular time doing that particular thing and striking that particular pose that's the same person so which one was it the thing is, you have to ask yourself, isn't the truth about 5G bad enough? The lack of testing and the safety issues, etc. So why all the misleading information? Why the deception? What purpose can it possibly serve other than to generate distrust in both men? It's just illogical. So given the fusion of the two military documents we just looked at, um and the fact that neither of them are of any consequence whatsoever to 5G, one has to ask Mark Steele, as I'm doing right now, one, Mark Steele, who gave you that military document that is actually a combination of two? Two, if no one gave it to you, why did you create the document yourself? Now, it's important to keep in mind that if it was given to Mark Steele, he did not fact-check it and has inadvertently misled people. Hey, we all make mistakes. This is something that, having seen the error on his part, I trust he won't be doing again. If, however, he created the document, 
Well, then it can be firmly stated that he has intentionally altered evidence. Now, irrelevant as that particular evidence is for 5G. And it can be shown that he has intentionally used it to mislead the public. So which is it, Mark Still? Did someone give it to you, and if so, who? Or did you create the document? The public deserve to know the truth. I want to show everybody something. This is a military document, all right? And that document, what it says, base level, all right? Electromagnetic center, frequencies, radiation, all right? These are US military organizations, right, who use electromagnetic fields, right, in their research. But what I'm going to show you, the back of the document, because I do have the full document, what it actually states there, RF weapons. So anybody that tells me that those things that have been fitted to the streetlights in Gateshead aren't a part of a weapon system, go and get your head washed out. <laughs> go and sort your napper out, because I'm telling you now, right, you don't know what you're talking about. Unfortunately for Gateshead Council, as was found in a court by a judge, I'm an expert. Obviously, I decided to run my own checks on Mark Steele using only public source information. This was because his growing public profile in the anti-5G mo movement and also because there appears to be nothing publicly available to support his claims of expertise, that's in expertise in weaponry, not least the apparent deception as well, which I've just covered above in that military or two military documents, whether that's intentional or unintentional as it may be. Now, given that Mark Steele has been prolific in being interviewed by people with large online audiences of their own and even participated in a major documentary by somebody called Sasha Stone about the dangers of 5G, I felt that verification of his self-declared credentials was required now more than ever, really. This was especially true for me when I started to observe the increasing number of people online who were openly complaining about him, either not replying to their specific, uh, res quite reasonable questions, or being insulted by him if they didn't accept his response, or even being called trolls, before eventually you know, some people have been um, blocked by him on social media. Even I was questioned by Mark Steele at one point about the possibility of me being a troll, and that was simply um, because I asked him uh, something about his um, public Facebook thread pertaining to um, Grenfell Tower, which I will come on to shortly. Now, Mark still eventually pulled away from that conversation, leaving the questions unanswered. Um, I wasn't going to spend ages going to everybody who has interviewed Mark Steele, so I focus on just a few of the more well-known online sources. Uh, so to begin with, I contacted Project Camelot TV. I sent an email to Kerry at Project Camelot TV on the 15th of July, uh, 2019. And to date, uh, I don't know what it is, maybe the 18th, 19th of December, whatever it is, um, 2019, I've received no reply. So make of that what you will. On the 4th of August, 2019, I emailed the Sun Party, founded and led by Mark Steele's twin brother, Graham Steele. In the brief email you can see on the screen, I ended by asking for contact between Mark Steele and me to be arranged and left it open to them how they facilitated that. 
The following day, the Sun Party replied via someone calling himself Dave. I've got no idea what his last name is or what his rank position or anything is in the party. But it said nothing at all. It was literally completely ignored with respect to my request for Mark Steele to be notified that I wanted to speak to him. So, again, make of that what you will. So I was obviously a bit dejected by all this silence, especially since I was still seeing misleading information being shared online by Mark Steele. For example, along with the unsubstantiated mantra that Mark Steele is a weapons expert, there was the matter of two recent court hearings that Mark Steele attended as the defendant. The first one was promoted as a victory for the people in the fight against 5G. However, the truth is that Mark Steele lost that case and received a criminal conviction for antisocial behaviour. Now, I'm not putting any judgment or anything like that. I mean, that, that is just simply what happened. But it was not presented in the media that way. It was certainly not presented by uh, Mark Steele and his brother that way. It was not, as many people say, and media outlets say, a win for the people. So sometime later, Mark Steele was brought back to court and found guilty um, for breaching another, that court order, which was against him already. Now, true, the local authorities did not get the result they wanted, which, which was the imprisonment of Mark Steele. But nonetheless, they won twice. This is also important to keep in mind, I think, um, that the case was never about 5G. And in the first hearing, um, the live reporting of that event, um, I'll try to link that uh, page below as well, um, as things were happening, clearly show that Mark Steele was reminded a number of times to stop talking about 5G and stick to the charges against him which were all regarding antisocial behaviour. I believe there were two charges, if I remember rightly, and one of them was either uh, won or was dropped, and the other one he was found guilty of. Now, the judge even made it clear, according to that media report, that Mark Steele's defence bundle, which is a legal term for the papers that he was relying on, was inadmissible as it did not pertain to the charges. Outside, after the hearing, Mark Steele appears to have cherry-picked aspects of the hearing and then claimed that the judge almost agreed with him when the court order clearly states to the contrary. This is, quite frankly, blatant misrepresentation of the facts and is intentionally misleading. This intention to mislead the public cannot be seen here as being down to embarrassment um, because there was quite a public presence at the court in support of Mark Steele and his brother had previously contacted the media to try and um, give the hearing as much coverage as possible. Indeed, Mark Steele was happy to give interviews immediately afterwards so it's not as though he's feeling any shame or remorse or anything like that. So therefore, it can be asserted, based on the freely available evidence for the public to see now, that Mark Steele misrepresented the events of the hearing by claiming that the judge ruled that the public had a right to know. This is not what happened, as the live media reports prove, and also as the published court order also proves. The judge merely stated that he agreed that the public had a right to know as a passing comment, which did not form part of a court order pertaining to antisocial behaviour. That court order is the ruling. Mark Steele gave little to no acknowledgement that he had just been found guilty of antisocial behaviour and received a criminal record for that. So one has to wonder if he even realised the seriousness of the outcome. Now, Mark Steele has stated publicly that his defence for acting as he did was Section 3 of the criminal justice system, 
It should have actually been Section 3 of the Criminal Law Act, 1967, but I'm just clarifying that. I mean, this, you know, the point is he, he was uh, just slightly misquoted, but that's no big deal. Now, this section does not permit someone to commit a small crime in order to prevent a larger one. The wording of Section 3 is on the screen, and I'm surprised that Mark Steele's lawyer didn't point that out to him before the case. Actually, on that point, Mike, Mark Steele might even have a claim against his lawyer for poor representation. Who knows if he had been better represented by his lawyer, the outcome may have been different and Mark Steele would not have a criminal record. So, again, trying to be a devil's advocate here... You know, it's something, Mark Steele, you might want to think about. You've gone with a defence that simply doesn't stand. Now, as the viewer can see here from the wording of the Act, steps can be taken by someone that might not otherwise, or that they might not otherwise take in order to prevent a crime, but it does not permit someone to commit a crime. So, for example, restraining someone is permissible, whereas punching them in the face in order to knock them out isn't permissible, despite both actions concluding with the same result. That you know, Basically, the person is restrained and you know on the floor, basically waiting for the police. Now, you can do that in a the correct way, or you can assault them. And guess what? You're getting arrested for punching them in the face. So it's a fact that the way we conduct ourselves results in responses from other people. And it is that fact which Mark Still was answering charges of antisocial behaviour on, not the scientific data and confirmed health risks of 5G. The claims by Mark Still that the local authority were baby killers could have been handled, for instance, through a slander case but the local authority took the approach of antisocial behaviour. There would be a legal reason for doing this. If the case had been one of slander or libel, or both, then Mark Steele would have had the chance to prove his allegations are true by presenting his evidence. As it was, the allegation about antisocial behaviour towards individual members of the local authority... That, that's what they were going with. It's not that they were questioning what he was saying. They were basically saying his conduct towards people. And as a result, the council won. And this is significant and accurate in law. Knowing which charge to lay against someone is critical and could cost you the case if you went with the wrong charge. Now, you may not like that, but there you are. You know, that's the reality. You have to basically draw the line somewhere. So, as you can see, antisocial behaviour and slander are not the same thing. And Mark still has a criminal record now for antisocial behaviour, not slander or libel. Anyway, now, let's move on to the main reason that I was prompted to make this video. Mark Steele's comments about the Grenfell Tower disaster. Uh, now, before I do that, um, let's just take a look at Mark Steele's entire video, which was published on the YouTube channel named Anthony Steele, and then I'll come back to it. Now, I've just put the telly on. I never normally watch it. Never watch the BBC, not these scumbags. I'd ever. But this just shows you What's going on? Like, this just shows you, right? They're blaming the firemen for Grenfell Tower. The smart meter fire that the government decided to fit untested, unregulated, without surge arrest as setting fire to those buildings and killing them people. But guess what? Fire Brigade. Services response. So the fire brigades get the get the blame for killing. I want to show you something. You see that light outside? You see it? Watch. Watch. Watch again. It's got a 5G transmitter on the top. See it flick out. See it? 
She can't even look at look it's flashing on and off. He's seen it. 5G transmitter. That's a Mayflower transmitter on the top of it. It's 5G. Right? All the way around London. Now filling the place full of microwave radiation, right? And this is what happens. I want people to watch this. This is the scumbags, right? Blaming the fire brigade. That's ferocious, isn't it? That's what happens when you fill a building with aluminium cladding and pour microwave radiation to it. You can put a bit of mic, go and put some aluminium into a microwave oven and see what happens. I'll tell you what. Looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? Ever seen a fire like that before? Right, well, that's what happens when you fill a building full of microwave radiation, right? And then what I want to do, what I want to do, right? Gag. The people that live there, it's in the Telegraph today, they're going to gag them before they can show them the report. And guess what? Let's just blame the fire brigade. Are you lot going to wake up to the crap that these lot, I mean, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. The 5G Grenfell Tower, and it's the fire brigade's fault. 75 people dead. That's the bodies they found. The ones that didn't find were vaporised loonies. That's what happens when you fill a building full of microwave radiation. Smart, smart, secret militarised armaments and residential technology where they're pumping microwave radiation in breach of the law or the standards into your home. We've got a few of them. Multiple occupancy. Believers, you're in serious trouble. They're just waiting to pull the trigger. Wake up. Let me just have another little look. Let's just have another look, right, at that, at that fire, right, because I like to see this, right, so people can just see for themselves what happened. Watch. Watch again. That's a 5G fire inferno, same in South Korea. Look at it. The cladding was aluminium, poor microwave radiation, aluminium, see what happens. People need to wake up. Look at it. Unbelievable. Okay, so I think before I do anything, let me just be perfectly clear here. Mark Steele is 100% correct to protest against the claims that the fire brigade were in any way shape or form responsible for that fire or the deaths that occurred and to make such an accusation is just repulsive so mark still has got absolute support from me on that and i think he probably got the support of the entire british community on that as well however as far as i'm concerned in my view equally cruel how Mark Steele's comments that the fire was caused by 5G and smart meters. Um, now, I I would say I, I kind of knew that there was a problem here um, with what Mark Steele was saying before I even looked into it properly when he stated that the red flashing light was a 5G phased array weapon. I'm not saying that 5G phased array weapons don't exist or anything like that. Far, far from it. But I was literally shaking my head in disbelief at that comment. And let me just explain. Microwave energy at any particular frequency is not visible to the human eye or even standard cameras, whether they be video cameras, your mobile phone, um, single lens reflex cameras, disposable cameras, you know, high tech BBC, you know, film standard cameras, whatever. You can't see microwave energy. It falls outside of the part of the light spectrum that we can see. Any microwave energy weapons expert would know that in the same way that any child looking at the light spectrum in a book or on the Internet would know that. So why would Mark Steele think and say that microwave energy, as he says here in that video, can be seen with the naked eye 
and it's basically flashing red. Anyway, a little time passed and I ended up emailing the Grenfell Tower inquiry on the 1st of December this year. Uh, now, as of today's date, they've not replied, but I carried on doing a bit of um, research and I did manage to locate a transcript of the official evidence from all of the witnesses. Um, and you can see on the screen um, the start of the relevant uh, document and at the bottom of page four which follows on to the top of page five is the only mention of smart meters in the entire inquiry that's it this single mention proves that smart meters were not installed and that was also confirmed, incidentally, by the fire brigade investigation team. Obviously, these experts who are not just your standard um, firefighters, they, you know, they have got decades behind them and they can walk into an absolute burnt out, charred wreck and tell you exactly where that fire started, how, why, when. And it was also um, uh, confirmed by the health and safety executive who conducted their own investigations, obviously, as well. Now, according to all reports uh, other than Mark Steele, the fire began on the fourth floor, uh, specifically behind a fridge freezer. Now, like I say, Mark Steele's the only person to say otherwise, which means he contradicts the fire brigade, he contradicts the health and safety executive, he contradicts the Grenfell Tower um, inquiry. So... I asked, like I say, on Facebook, he put up his video that you've just seen, and I asked Mark Steele um, about this when he shared the video. Um, and he told me, as you can see here, that he gave all the evidence to the inquiry, but they had ignored it. So I followed up on that with the obvious question about what did you uh, provide the inquiry with? Uh, when did you do it? Have you got a copy, etc.? Now, if you think about it clearly, if there was a cover-up, as Mark still seems to suggest, regarding the deaths of those innocent people in Grenfell Tower, then whoever is covering it up needs to go to prison for crimes against humanity and, quite frankly, murder. If Mark still was telling the truth on Facebook, his evidence of a cover-up would be legal dynamite. Excuse the pun. Also, legally, to withhold such evidence from the police would be a crime in itself and the most disgusting act of cruelty to the relatives of the deceased. So, given that Mark still claims the inquiry ignored vital evidence one has to wonder why Mark still didn't go to the police to report that crime. Or if the police were, should we say, in on it, why didn't he go to the media, who have a strong history of giving Mark Steele's version of events plenty of airtime in the past without fact-checking what he said to them? In response to my request to see the alleged evidence, Mark still asked if I was a troll and if I believed that smart meters could start fires. Now, this is a well-known evasive tactic used by people when they've been caught out on something and can't support their claims. Now, I know some people um, have claimed that Mark still has narcissistic tendencies and attributes this evasive approach to that personality type. But I would say that Mark Steele's personality traits one way or another are irrelevant. The fact that he avoided my question and tried to divert attention by goading me into defending myself is what is significant here. One does not need to be narcissistic to make use of the techniques used by narcissists because no one has a monopoly on evasion. Anyone can do it. Yes, admittedly, narcissists are very good at that, but 
that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fact that he simply didn't uh, respond appropriately. So needless to say, at the end of it all, I received no evidence from Mark Steele to support his claim. The short version of the Grenfell Tower tragedy is that smart meters were not installed and the fire was not started by any aspect of 5G, internally or externally. So, I have the following questions for Mark Steele. There's only seven of them. One, what exactly did you submit to the Grenfell Tower inquiry? Two, when did you submit it? Three, what method of submission did you use, i.e., was it in person, Royal Mail, you know, um, courier, things like that? Where can the public, this is question four, where can the public view a copy of what you submitted to the inquiry? Five, what evidence do you have to prove that 5G was active in the area at the time of the fire? I'm talking about the surrounding area because apparently you can uh, affect the air as well. Six, what evidence do you have to prove smart meters were installed in the block of flats, which obviously contradicts all evidence available at the moment? And seven, why haven't you presented your evidence of a crime to the police? Now, on the 1st of December, as well as emailing the Greenfield Tower inquiry, I also used Facebook Messenger to contact the gentleman I mentioned earlier, Sasha Stone, who's the producer of the documentary, a uh, very good documentary, um, called 5G Apocalypse, in which Mark still features prominently. My message was sent in the, that morning and read the same day, I think in the early evening, something like that. Um, and as with all the people con that I've contacted about Mark Steele, no one wants to comment about whether they validated his alleged credentials or not. And Sharon, so, sorry, Sasha Stone is no exception. He read it and did not reply. I don't know why. I mean, I even asked him if I could, perhaps he could prompt me into how I could go about verifying that if he didn't want to. I mean, I, it really wasn't very rude. It was quite respectful, I thought. Anyway, in closing, I think I would say this. Without any assistance from Mark Steele, and despite his avoidance of these concerns, I have managed to establish that Mark Steele holds um, a published patent, along with his twin brother Graham, for a visor and crash helmet design, but I was unable to establish any patents at all for the weapons he claims to have designed and actually made. I have no idea what type of weapons Mark Steele is an expert in, if any, and it seems neither does anyone else, because there is that mantra that he is a weapons expert, but if you ask anyone what type of weapon is he an expert in, and you tend to get quite a blank look. Mark Steele's public approach to the matter of 5G is not one of assistance, guidance and support, but rather seems to be one of scaremongering through inflammatory language, like claiming the UK is amassing an army against 5G and calling people names as well as diverting attention from pressing questions to argumentative points. So I don't know why he would do this. It just doesn't make any sense. I know, you know, there is some sort of, for want of a better phrase, conspiracy theory that he's sort of part of a counter movement to undermine or whatever. I mean, I've got no evidence to support that at all. Um, and I do find that you know, when somebody isn't um, apparently all they appear to be, the amount of allegations that can come against them is quite incredible. So I'm just making observations and putting questions forward rather than you know, outright saying he works for these people, he works for that person. If you can't back it up, then don't say it. Um, but having said that, uh, Mark Steele certainly does f 
seem to find it difficult to accept that when people ask for evidence, it is not an attack on him, but simply a request for information so that others can use the evidence too. So it's actually a compliment. My own checks into his claims on uh, his Facebook page that he became legally qualified via the Council of Europe have yielded no supporting evidence at all. And yes, I did email them. The glasses Mark still uses cannot be found online. And believe me, I've tried. So I have to assume that they can only be purchased in store at TK Maxx, where he said he gets his from. This is not unusual, as many companies have in-store only offers, um, rather than everything in-store is also online. You know, not everybody does that. The only online source I could find for iridium-coated sunglasses was a company called Shades Daddy, which I will link below as well. And they're not TK Maxx, TK Maxx or Timberland as uh, referred to by Mark Steele. Now, I have to wonder what his legal qualifications are and what legal body he is registered with, as well as his public registration number with that legal body, because some of the things he's saying... Now, OK, I, I think he may have been badly represented by his lawyer. So, again, we all make mistakes and maybe that lawyer made a mistake. But the amount of things that are being said and done by Mark Steele, I cannot for the life of me accept that a legally trained person knowing the consequences would make such mistakes. So I would be interested to see evidence of his specific publicly claimed qualifications um, through that Council of Europe. I think it would be helpful as well if Mark Steele could publish a copy of the most recent court order that inexplicably wasn't published by the court this time. The first one was, but the second one wasn't. I approached the court about this. Um, I pointed out that it was the case was brought at public expense by a public body with public servants against a member of the public and they were using a public resource in the form of the court and public servants in the form of a judge and therefore the public had a right to know. And I was told that um, I could make an application formally. Um, I forget how much it was, um, but uh, it was uh, certainly wasn't just 10 or 20 pounds. It was like over 100 pounds. It was a non-refundable fee and the likelihood of me being given a copy as I was not party to proceedings was very, very unlikely. So basically I'm just wasting my money, which I find odd because the first time round that order was published without any issue. This time round the court hasn't published it, the council hasn't published it and Mark still hasn't published it. So Mark, can we see the document? All you've got to do is scan it and put it online. Mark still mentions a few times in his video posts that the rollout of 5G is an indictable crime and that he has evidence to support legal cases against the guilty. So I have to wonder why he has not sought the arrest of those guilty people or carried out his own citizens' arrests. Because if he has that evidence, you have ground. If the police won't act, you have grounds now to act in that way and perform a citizen's arrest. And that would be supported by Section 3, which he mentioned earlier. But it's not being done. Also, I think in order to help perhaps some concerned parents, and bearing in mind that nosebleeds are common in children, for all sorts of different reasons, I have to ask, what evidence do you, Mark, still have other than photographs of children with you know, bleeding noses, that 5G caused the bleeding noses in those children or any other children. And again, I'm stressing, let's face it, you know, we've all been children, we've all had bloody noses, you know, especially boys, you know, messing around at school and everything, you know, falling off trees and, you know. So, you know, you're making a claim, and I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm simply asking for the evidence. So... By staying focused on the subject and presenting solid facts, rather than insulting people who question you, your reputation 
will not be taking such a hammer in as it is at the moment. So uh, I don't know if you'll take it in the way that it's intended. Um, I'm hoping you will, but it is the case that people look up to you and their questions are not always intended to attack you. So you owe them a duty of care, given your public position in the public arena. I hope that if Mark still spends some time digesting the issues and points in this video, he will see the genuine intention behind it and hopefully present some information that puts all of these concerns to rest once and for all so we can all move on more united than ever and force real scientific studies into 5G and the risks to life that we already know are there. Now, whilst his recent online activities suggest that Mark Steele will likely not see this video as it's intended, I hope he surprises us all with a fantastic response to put everyone's mind at rest. That said, given the comments by Mark Steele about Grenfell Tower, the disaster that killed those people, and given that his comments are that it was caused by 5G smart meters and the incalculable distress this could cause the relatives who are still seeking closure on this nightmare. Personally, I wish to state just for myself that I find your arrogance on this matter repugnant. So, Mark Still, I will now sit back and wait in the hope that common sense prevails and you do the right thing. I hope that you do respond. I just hope that it is not with the sound of silence. Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Because a vision softly creeping Left its seeds while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains Within the sound of silence In restless dreams I walk alone In narrow streets of cobblestone the halo of a history lamp I turn my collar to the cold and damp When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light That split the night And touched the sound of silence and in the naked light I saw Ten thousand people, maybe more People talking without speaking People hearing without listening People writing songs Cancer 